Good morning everybody. It's very, very lovely to be here this morning. My name is Ali Board. I'm an artist and author and an educator. And if you are watching me on Tuesday the 5th of September, I had to check the date, at 9am uh, UK time, then you are going to be watching me live on YouTube. But you might be watching me on Catch Up, you might be watching me via my YouTube channel or my blog or the very many places that you can find me um, and I'll talk more about that in just a second. So what is Technique Tuesday? So there might be some of you watching who are thinking mm, Technique Tuesday Ali. Technique Tuesday, I can't even speak this morning. Technique Tuesday Ali, what is that all about? about? It is something that I started just before lockdown in 2020 as a way of keeping us all connected. And when we got back out into the big wide world, I kind of made the decision that I really liked us staying all connected, no matter where we are in the world. And I can already see from the live chat that is going on that, that you really are spread out across the world today. So thank you for taking the time to join me, no matter where you are. If you're watching me on Catch Up, then of course you can pause me, you can go make the dinner, go make yourself a coffee, whatever it is. But uh, because this is a live broadcast, I am going to crack on with it. Now, I do have to uh, have a few notes in front of me because I have a lot to remember in these broadcasts. Uh, but the main thing is to tell you that because this is September 2023, uh, I have a theme of the month this month and my theme is the river. And what this means is that uh, we have got a lot of diverse subjects that we're going to be tackling. Today, as part of Technique Tuesday, we're going to be tackling a heron uh, on the river, just because I really liked the photo when I saw it. But uh, in my regular classes, we're going to be tackling canal boats and footbridges and reflections. And uh, what else are we tackling? Uh, moving water, all of those kind of things. So it's really quite a diverse subject to tackle. Now we're going to go down uh, quite a traditional route today. We're going to start off with watercolour, possibly a little bit of pen as well. We'll see how that uh, makes its way. As you know, I don't like to overthink my projects, but you will be able to follow it step by step. But of course, you might want to follow along at home. And how are you going to do that? So you are going to do that by popping over to my website. What is my website? I know most of you know. I know that you do. But just in case you don't, here is my website address. www.learningtopaint.co.uk and over on that website, you'll find a whole wealth of resources. It's not just about uh, me selling my tuition uh, although you can obviously find that there, but it's uh, the portal for the All Aboard Artists, for those people that uh, are part of my regular monthly art group. And it's a place where you can find the blog. But at the moment, there's a whole load of other stuff going on uh, on it too. So bear with me uh, just before I start my demonstration. Let me just show you where you can find some of the things that you might need to find. She says, looking for the right button to click. There it is. So if you go to that address, www.learningtopaint.co.uk, then uh, depending on your device, uh, this is the page that you might find uh, when you go there. Um, and like I say, be, depending on your device, it might look a little bit different depending on uh, how you're viewing it, whether you're on a mobile phone or a tablet or something else, but it should look pretty similar. Now, uh, across the top, if you're looking at it on a desktop, you'll be able to see there's the menu across there. Let me just pass my cursor over it so you can see various uh, things pop up. On your device, it may pop up as a few lines. Now, let's take you to the blog. That's where you're going to find the Technique Tuesday resources. So we'll click on that and you'll see straight away. You can, I've added a search bar. The website's had a bit of an overhaul recently, uh, which you regular viewers of it will probably uh, know. Um, there you go, there's Technique Tuesday for September. Let's give it a click and uh, you'll be able to read a little bit more about the project. There you can see our theme of the month is the river. And here is the photograph that I'm going to be tackling today, this amazing photograph of a heron uh, about to pounce uh, <laughs> just on the edge of the river. And you can see underneath that photograph, there's a little button that says download here so that you can download it and paint from it yourself. 
and here is the equipment that I'm going to be using today. Those underlined uh, nonsense words just to the right of everything are some links so if you fancy treating yourself to something that I have used and you would like to do the same, uh, those are what are called affiliate links so uh, if you click on those and you purchase from them then I get a tiny tiny few pence, a little kickback uh, which just helps me to keep these Technique Tuesday uh, broadcasts free for everybody because as you can imagine there's quite a lot of tech and time goes into these broadcasts and I'm trying very hard to keep them free for as long as I can. Uh, if you are watching this on catch up then you might have watched it via that link obviously I can't click on it at the moment where it says the broadcast in full because I'm broadcasting and there will be a copy of my painting there and some bits of information about other things that you might want to join me for there's that canal boat that we're going to be tackling I'm really excited to do that it's going to be a right old challenge uh, that one but just in case you're thinking, well, what else can I find on your website, Ali? This is something uh, that you might be interested in at the moment. This is the project, uh, my year long, almost a year long project that I am currently involved in, which is called 50 at 50. I turn 50 next August. And so I wanted my 50th year to count for something. So I'm creating 50 paintings, which are going to uh, go for auction with 50% uh, of the profits going to the Dorset Wildlife Trust, a uh, charity that is very dear to my heart. And if you want to read more about it, there are already some pieces up on the site. There you go. There's the first four. We have a badger. We have a fox. We have a dragonfly. Dragonfly has been very popular. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I went a little bit abstract at the weekend and I did some seed heads with some printmaking techniques. And you can read more about them there. Now, one date that you might want to pop into your diaries is going to be the 22nd of September because there's another little bit uh, that has popped up on the website recently uh, where I am currently working on expanding the shop. And you'll see that there's tuition, which you would ordinarily expect gift vouchers, but we're going to be selling some art materials as well. And uh, why is that important? That's uh, important because I'm going back into business with my parents. Now, if you don't know my backstory, I actually started work uh, working with my parents in an, in the art materials business. They um, had an art material shop and a stationery shop in my hometown. There, uh, we uh, really kind of kind of stocked unusual art materials and recently I was having this discussion with my parents about uh, sustainability and about uh, how there were particular products that you guys out there just can't get hold of so we've been working very hard in the background to create some of those products we're also going to be selling some pre-loved art materials as well so things that either I have <clears throat> partly used and I still got loads of life in them, but don't want any more. Or we are looking to buy up other people's pre-loved art materials and sell them on. So it might be that you want to try something, but you don't want to go to a huge expense. We're going to have that section there. So the 22nd of September is that date to pop in your diaries when that goes live. If you're signed up to my newsletter and social media, you'll hear more about that. It is also the day that my January and February classes go live on the site too. So there's going to be lots lots and lots on the website to uh, look at, to read about with the 50 and 50 challenge and the Technique Tuesday and all of that kind of stuff that uh, you know me for. So shall we get on to today's project, which is uh, based on the theme of uh, the river and we're looking at that heron. Now, if you are watching this live on YouTube, I can see already that there's loads and loads and loads of you chatting to each other, which is awesome. Don't talk to me, talk to each other. That's what Technique Tuesday and the uh, community is all about. I can see that some of you already liking the idea of the pre-loved art materials. So uh, we've been looking at the river and this is the piece of reference that I'm going to be working from today. This is the heron photo that I've got. It's quite a tricky one because it's got a lot of texture going on. Lots of texture in the background, which I'm not uh, too sure I'm going to pop in yet. Uh, and we've got lots of texture on that beautiful heron itself. I loved the fact that it got kind of one leg picked up. 
but it is going to be a, a tricky one for me to navigate so join me won't you whilst we have a stab at it i'm going to move all of my notes out of the way so those aren't the first thing you see when i go to the overhead camera just got my little, I just have to glance at my notes to make sure that I haven't forgotten anything. So shall we go to that uh, overhead camera and see what it is I have prepared for you. So here is the drawing that I've got, but I've got a couple of things to share with you first. The first thing is a new little gadget I have made myself, which uh, might not be screamingly obvious. Here it is, really high tech gadget, this. So it's a little strip of wood, little uh, sort of flat uh, dowling that has got a piece of self-adhesive magnetic tape on the back of it. What is this for? Now, very often when I'm demonstrating for you, um, I do it on uh, this board, which I find much easier to do because it's tipped up for me so I can see it and I don't get my head in shot or I try not to get my head in shot. If the lovely Gary is watching, he'll uh, know how many times he has to scream at me for getting my head in shot. Um, so I have to have my board tipped up. It's a good idea to have your board tipped up anyway. Uh, because it allows uh, gravity to help your paint fall, particularly when you're working in watercolour. But I'm working on a block today. This is the block I'm working on. This is a Hanamula Andalusia block. So it's glued on uh, all four sides. But of course, look at that. <laughs> Not helpful at all for broadcasting. And what I have done uh, in the past is to use my little push pins to try to hold it up, but they're not terribly secure. So I came up with this idea. What I needed was like a shelf. And so look at this. I'm very proud of this, can you tell? Look at this. Bit of wood with some magnetic strip on the back because my board is magnetic and you can read more on the blog about this. It's really very strong indeed. And look, I can rest it on the shelf and it doesn't slide. How happy does that make me? Too happy, some would say. And it also means that I can have it just slightly out of shot and uh, you can still see what it is that I am painting. So what did I do in preparation uh, for the broadcast today? Like I said, I've gone for the Hanamula Andalusia. Um, why have I gone for Hanamula? Uh, this was a nice small pad. It's 24 by 32, so it's kind of close. It's a little bit bigger than A4. Um, it is incredibly heavy. 500 grams and the Andalusia paper is um, <laughs> a couple of you saying clever clogs that makes me chuckle thanks Julie um, this is a really unusual paper because it's got two different surfaces it is rough on uh, the front and on the reverse you can see it says cold pressed which is the not not surface not and cold pressed are the same thing so it means that when I have done my painting, I can use the back, but it's got a slightly different surface on it, which makes it incredibly unusual. And because it's 500 grams, I can probably paint on the back and I, there's no probably about it, really. I have very often painted on the back just in case the first one doesn't quite make it to the uh, pass, if I think. Mm, not too sure about that. Now, I am hoping that today's painting will make the pass because uh, if it does then it's going to be one of the 50 at 50 projects because obviously I've got 50 paintings to produce so they can't all be produced uh, away from the cameras some of them actually have to be produced um, live shall we say it now what I do want to do before I start painting because so many of you have tuned in this morning obviously this is going to be uh, a very popular subject and there were some people that I haven't said good morning to I know I said good morning to some of you in the chat uh, I just want to give some names a shout out. Teresa, Rabina, Trudy. Uh, lots of people saying they're going for a walk by the river. Not jealous at all. Uh, Rosemary, good morning. Karen. Karen is saying, I don't often manage to join you live, but here I am on holiday in Spain. <laughs> well, Karen, that's very kind of you. Um, Nick, good morning. Uh, now, Nick is saying, please say hi to your dad from Nick in Australia. Nick, uh, dad did tell me about you and I know that you tuned in to my uh, koala broadcast. I will definitely say uh, hi to my dad from you. Thank you. Bless you for tuning in. Uh, what else? Uh, Jilly, good morning. Val, uh, who have we got? Oh, lovely Fran in Weymouth. Um, who else have we got? Uh, Christine. And Annette, thank you so much to everybody for tuning in. You are very, very kind indeed. 
So let's remind you of how I got from the photograph to this drawing. So here's that photograph, beady-eyed heron that we have got. Um, and I did something slightly different with my composition. I do this an awful lot that I try to, particularly with an animal, I try to give it some space to move into. And that's important uh, from a movement point of view, from a composition point of view. It means that my heron isn't slap bang in the middle of my paper, although I have given it plenty of space all the way around. So uh, I could, if I decide to mount this, I could obviously shift my mount uh, wherever I wanted it to be. But this has movement, so uh, it's got a leg picked up. You anticipate that your heron is going to put that leg down in the water, so it needs space to move into. So I've set it over to the right ever so slightly. There's lots of things I have missed out from the photograph. I know that uh, working from photographs is often discussed about whether you should or whether you shouldn't, how much information you put in, how much information you leave out. It's a constant, constant discussion, really. What I can tell you is that I want to be concentrating on the heron itself. I want you to be looking at the texture of the feathers. I want you to notice this incredible beak that is used for spearing the fish and this uh, beady eye. I want you to be looking at the legs and the movement as it walks into the water. What I don't really want you to be focusing on because I'm not a photorealistic painter is I don't want to be concentrating too much on all of the leaves in the background. Let's show you that reference again so that you can see what I mean. As beautiful as it is uh, to have that texture, my concern is that it's going to fight with what is going on in the foreground. So all I have done is uh, make some very sort of generalised marks. I do this a lot with my pencil. I focus on uh, the actual uh, figure, creature, uh, point of interest. And then I take my pencil and I go ugh, ugh, with it to sort of suggest that there's things going on. That way, uh, hopefully, I'll be able to suggest that it is uh, greenery or the riverbank or whatever it is that I'm trying to uh, talk about. Also, um, I haven't made too much of the water. Now, there's lots of reasons for this. Uh, time being one of them. Uh, the fact that I don't want it to all be about the water. I have, as you can see, put a little bit of a ripple in there. I have put a little bit of reflection. Why haven't I done too much of the water when it is very obvious that this is a wading bird? I haven't done too much of the water because it's really obvious that it's a wading bird. I don't need to say, oh, by the way, there's some water here because A, you can't see the bottom of its leg. So that suggests that it's either standing in a liquid or, uh, you know, got some very large leg warmers on. Um, but hopefully you already presuppose that this bird is standing in water. And maybe if I just do a little bit of uh, movement or reflection or surface tension, that will be enough. Now, the other thing that I had written in my notes is uh, tell them, Ali, why you're not masking the heron out. So uh, let's go back to that reference again. Uh, I'm not masking the heron out. So masking fluid is the thing that you can use to save your subject matter. So you paint it on, you allow it to dry. It's like a little bit of a sort of rubber solution. And then you can paint the background in without having to worry about damaging the foreground um, and then you can peel the masking fluid off and uh, voila your your bird is nicely safe now there's two reasons that i haven't done this one is that um, if i try to do masking of this size area live it takes a while to dry and uh, then we just sit here watching masking fluid dry if I tried to do it the night before, I'm pushing my luck for the amount of time that masking fluid can stay on the surface because usually I only like to leave it on for a couple of hours and I love you all, but I'm not masking my heron out at six o'clock in the morning. OK, uh, so I had that's another reason I haven't done it. The third reason really for, for not doing it. Third, second, not sure, uh, is that um, the issue with masking fluid is that it creates a very hard line around your subject matter. 
and I don't want my heron to look like it's a cardboard cutout. I don't want it to look like I've sort of cut it out of card and stuck it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it negatively, which is dangerous. And what do I mean by that? I mean that I'm going to paint my greenery and my water and things all around my heron, then paint the heron itself. Now, that's dangerous because if I get a little bit exuberant in painting my background, then the chances are I'm going to end up with a green heron. But I've got some gouache, so I have some white paint just in case that happens. But so there's a, a little bit of a background as to, to why I'm doing what I'm doing this morning. But before all of that happens, what I am going to do is I'm going to ink my heron in very loosely. Now, this is a technique I use a lot. If you are an SAA member, then you hopefully will have had your painting create uh, magazine for September and you will have seen a whole eight page tutorial that um, they very uh, kindly invited me to write for that all about garden birds and obviously this is not really <laughs> very different I know not very many people would find this in their garden but it's the same set of techniques it's drawing it out it's using a pen to secure that drawing and then going back with paint or textures or whatever it is afterwards so this is my unipin pen uh, those of you who watch a lot of my broadcasts know that this is one of my favorites why is it my favorite because it's dark gray and uh, it means that it's not quite as harsh as black and it's uh, much more appropriate to the color scheme of my uh, bird than perhaps a brown or something else now i'm sure that uh, there'll be people out there going yeah but you've done your drawing ali why are you then inking it in um, I'm inking it in because very often when I get very exuberant with my paint, my pencil drawing tends to uh, disappear. And where I've got it inked in, it shows up just a little better underneath any washes that I might put down. Now, if you are new to my tuition, uh, firstly, thank you very much uh, for joining me. Second, you will know that I, you will notice that I'm drawing in a very specific way. And I call it the Morse code technique. Uh, it's a dot and dash style of method. We have a second camera today. Uh, look at that. So can you see uh, Morse code technique? So dots and dashes. Why do I do that? I do it because uh, I can change my mind about where things are going. I do not like very solid lines. If I draw a solid line, and my brush goes beyond it, it will look like a mistake. If I draw a broken line, which is all part of mark making, if you're a regular on my tuition, you know I talk about mark making a lot. Uh, and uh, this kind of broken line, this mark making, means that I can change my mind, I can add things to it, I can put more detail in at a later time if I so choose, or equally, it defines the edges and the contours of things without uh, over describing them. Oh, some of you liking the new close up camera. Good. I'm, like, I'm glad you like that. Let's just move this up a little bit so you can see its legs. Uh, don't want to do too much pen on that part of the bird because actually those feathers are white. Same down here. Just going to, uh, I've got uh, the photograph actually up in front of me on a digital device. So that's why. I have to leave occasionally and do a bit of scrolling. Um, let's get these legs in. Uh, amazing legs coming down. And again, not over describing. I'm just trying to get enough information in so that it looks like uh, a leg. And uh, but, you know, not kind of trying to describe every last bit of it because if I describe every last bit of it, what's going to happen? I'm going to have to paint every last bit of it, and I really don't want to do that. Firstly, because we're on a bit of a time limit today, and secondly, because that's not my style. Now, do I do the water tension and the reflection in pen as well? No, I don't, because this is um, an actual thing. This is its reflection, so I'm going to rely on watercolour to do that. Let's go back up to the, let's move my little magnetic bar down and let's go back up to the top 
which I am going to switch to a black pen for. So the same uh, Unipin pen, but I'm going to switch to black for this because our heron has a beady old eye, which I want to get in nice and early. Let's do a bit more to that. Oh, it's very hard to do beady eye and not get my head in shot. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, let's get the back of beady eye in. You'll see that if I'm not sure about a line, rather than trying to draw it in, I put it in in dots instead. Uh, and that way I'm not committing to it. Now this part of the heron is actually black. Well, a very, very, very dark grey. So I could afford to do a bit of black pen work on there. Because you don't just have to do one colour of pen. You can, you're allowed to do more than one. Uh, let's get that in. Where else is it black? It's black. Uh, it's got some amazing black feathers uh, here on the shoulder. The pens might not look desperately different um, in the, the camera, but I can assure you that they are. Uh, we've got a bit of black coming down here as well. Some nice broken marks with that. And uh, hopefully already it starts to look uh, quite three-dimensional. Don't faff about with it, Ali. Crack on with it. And let's show you that uh, in the kind of the overall context. Here we go. So uh, you can see, yeah, actually you can see the difference between the two pens there. My heron is now starting to stand out. Uh, it's there and it's fixed. Um, but although I know that this pen is waterproof, uh, because sometimes pen takes a little while to dry on the paper, it's worth giving it a blast with the heat gun. So I'm going to do that very, very quickly to make sure that it dries absolutely safe. So we'll just give it a little blast of heat. It won't need an awful lot. I just want to make sure that it is definitely, definitely dry because I don't really want an exploding heron, if I'm honest. So now we get to think about uh, what it is that we are going to do in the background uh, for this. And I'm going to try and make it nice and easy for myself. Uh, and when I say nice and easy, I mean not a complicated set of techniques for the background. Here are my thoughts on it. I'm going to do a, a vignette, so it's going to have soft edges um, because I just want it to sort of blur into the background. I'm going to paint it negatively. I'm going to use a very specific green colour called Green Appetite Genuine. Here's my box of uh, tricks that I use. Uh, these are the colours that I use on a regular basis. So I like tubed colour that I squeeze out into empty pans uh, and then I uh, create my colour palette from there. This is Green Appetite Genuine. It's a Daniel Smith colour, an American brand of watercolour paints. Um, the reason that I love it so much is it's a very natural looking green and uh, it granulates and it splits and it does interesting things. Um, what else do I have around that? I've got my spray bottle already. You can see I've uh, just in shot. Let's uh, move this ever so slightly and uh, get my water pot in shot. Ooh, slopping it everywhere. Um, I've got a selection of brushes. Uh, I'm going to start off with my size 2 Casaneo uh, mop so that I make uh, loose marks. But I'm going to throw something else into the mix today. Um, if you follow my work on a regular basis, you will know that I am constantly striving to find materials that are sustainable. Now, sustainable is a real buzzword at the moment, isn't it? And I am reluctant to use it because I don't necessarily mean that I'm a big eco warrior. What I'm trying to do is to be a lot more thoughtful about the products that I use, why I use them, how I use them, how they impact the environment, all of those kind of things. And I use Kitchen Roll. This is, I, I mean, I do have it here as a safety net. 
This is the kitchen roll that I use on a regular basis because it, it works for me. I've gone from the very cheap stuff to the posher stuff so that I don't use quite so much. But I am aware that this isn't the great, I get through a lot of kitchen roll. So today I am going to try this. I've never done this before and I know that there'll be somebody for you out there that go, of course you have Ali, you've tested it. And because you wouldn't go live with something that you hadn't experimented with before. Well. I'm here to tell you I quite like to fly by the seat of my pants on occasion. So this is a microfiber cloth. This is a cleaning cloth that I'm going to use to see if uh, it works in a similar way, because if it does, then uh, I don't need to throw it away. Yes, I will probably have to wash it, but I've got uh, a pack of them and I, wor I won't wash them individually. I'll wash them all together. So it's just a thought process. So, but I do have my kitchen roll here just in case it doesn't work <laughs> dear uh so uh, i've got that yes jeopardy absolutely hillary couldn't be more jeopardy if it tried never mind so i've got my um microfiber i've got my picture all done and ready so let's give it a spritz with the spray bottle i'm spraying around my heron i'm not worried if some of the spray goes on the heron because to be honest by the time i slop this color on it's probably going to run anyway you can see in the camera uh, just how wet that is and i'm going to make sure that my mop brush uh, is thoroughly soaked uh, you can see that it's full of uh, water i'm going to roll it into my green appetite genuine and then i'm just gonna go for it so the thing uh, I'm going to tackle the thing that I've been trying to re remember, which is the kind of the space in the neck. And I'm going to paint around my heron as best I can. Look at that. Diffusing beautifully. Diffusing uh, beautifully. Oh, so Sue is saying old linen tea towels cut into quarters work well. I never have kitchen roll. Oh, Sue, that's really interesting. Thank you very much for uh, sharing that. If the microfiber doesn't work, I'll have a look at that. That's really kind of you to share. Thank you very much indeed. So let's get that green uh, in and around. We'll just kind of, we'll soak it first. Um, now I do want it to be uh, quite a bit darker down here because I've got some white feathers going in. Now, I know I'm painting over the heron. Don't worry, I'm gonna paint uh, some of those white highlights in later with some gouache. Let's not worry about uh, how we're describing that back section. In fact, here we go. Let's uh, start blending that out with a bit of water. And you can see it's uh, sort of starting to uh, cascade down the page, which I don't dislike. Let's have a look at my uh, reference material just so that I get an idea of where it is I need it to be darker. I need it to be darker down here because I need the white to show up. I need it to be quite, now I haven't got any water here, so this will be interesting. Let's uh, pop some of that uh, green in there because it's got uh, a little white bottom going on. Uh, let's not over describe that. Let's get those gaps in, all of that kind of stuff. And uh, yes, Christine has spotted what it is that I'm about to do. I'm going to see if microfiber will rag roll. Now this is quite a big, this is sort of bigger than the, um, the kitchen roll that I would normally use. And what I'm gonna do is see if, oh, it's okay, it's different. It's not pulling it off in the kind of the same way that I would anticipate it, but it's taking care of all the wet section faster. So that's quite interesting. Hasn't got that nice uh, crinkly effect that kitchen roll has, but you know, win some, lose some. Now I'm gonna break all my rules here. The rule is that the minute that the kitchen roll or the uh, towel hits the paper, you shouldn't go back in and add more color, but I'm gonna because I'm feeling rebellious today. So I'm gonna go back in with a much deeper green. Now, how is it that I can get away with this and I'm not getting cauliflowers? Uh, the, the truthful answer is that I probably will get some cauliflowers, but I'll take care of them in a minute. But my brush isn't sopping wet this time. Um, and so I can afford to add some deeper, darker color back in 
so that I get some nice uh, tonal variation and a bit of contrast going on. Uh, what's going on here? Doopy doopy doop. But I think um, because uh, Sue was so kind in, in sharing the idea about the linen, I think I'll try that. I don't, I don't think I have any linen tea towels, but well, I'll have a look. If not, I'm sure I've got some linen scraps somewhere. So let's make that a bit deeper. I can't add any water back into that, otherwise I will get cauliflowers, but I can soften the edge. Now this microfiber is very good for softening the edges of your color. Look at that, to get them to sort of blend. Will it lift out? Mm, sort of. Um, to get them to blend from one to the other. And that works really well. And I quite like some of these marks. I'm also going to give it a little bit of a, an almost, uh, I see I'm using it to dry my brush off as well, which just does a very good job of, far too good actually. I'm gonna um, pop a little bit of spatter in here as well at this stage, uh, kind of because I can, um, and it will add to some of the texture marks that I'm making. So I've got some soft where it's going into the wet um let's do a bit more i don't want to really give it a spatter halo but it's a useful mark to make for suggesting things um now what else do i want to do to this i want to lift a bit of that color because i don't like that mark i want to lift um oh let's do that actually with a, an imitation sable brush and let's go to the close-up camera so you can see what i'm doing um, I've got a bit of a funny old mark here on my heron, um, which I'm not, I could, I'm being super fussy about. Um, it had a, quite a hard edge, but because the Hanamula paper you can lift off really easily, then I'm using my uh, imitation sable brush to agitate that surface and then it comes away nice and cleanly. So I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> Lots of uh, people uh, making um, comments uh, on the use of the microfiber. So that's interesting. But this is it, isn't it? It's kind of part of my job to test these theories out um, so that you don't have to. Right, I'm going to give it a, a blast of heat. Uh, so just bear with me while I dry this off. Just mopping up a little bit of it so that it doesn't take quite so long to dry. And I need to dry it all the way around as well because don't forget, it's not just this part that I'm drying, I sprayed it all the way around with water. So if I want the whole thing to dry, I've got to dry in the areas that don't have colour too. So we're nearly there. Almost there. Okay, that'll do, I think, for the time being. If uh, you were doing this uh, ordinarily, obviously you'd, you'd take longer for it to dry. I can get away with it because uh, I'm working on a block um, and uh, it's, it's holding the edges. Now, it'd be tempting to go and do the heron, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go in and do the water. Now, how am I going to differentiate between the uh, greenery in the background and the water? not tricky it sounds tricky but it's not tricky and again it comes back to mark making so the mark that you might have noticed i use <laughs> this is the universal mime for laying down foliage because that's how my brush will have gone it my brush dances on the paper it goes flicky flicky all the way around to create foliage because in my head that is the pattern that it uh makes but when it comes to the water 
I know I don't want to do flicky flicky I want to do sweepy sweepy because we need to think about the surface tension of this water and because we don't want the water to look like it's flowing down a hill um, I've got to be careful that I get it nice and horizontal so I'm not going to change the color I might add a shadow to it later but for the time being not going to change the color I've got my size 8 uh, SAA imitation sable brush here so I'm going to go back into the green appetite genuine this isn't going to be as wet because I want to have better control over it and what I'm going to do is you see me practicing the mark before it goes on the paper I'm going to sweep some of that color in and around the leg to show that it's standing in something <clears throat> not on it in it and we'll make the we'll make sure that that water goes right up to the leg and passes behind it too so that you get this sense that there the water goes beyond it that the water doesn't just start from the bottom and come down that you've got other things going on let's load it up with some stronger color and then if you're quick what you can do is pop your brush into the water and take care of the amount of water that's on it and just use a damp brush to blend out some of these marks so that they're not all found marks that some of them are lost so some of them have soft edges as opposed to all having hard edges actually this <laughs> microfiber is doing it i'm gonna have to sort of relearn what it feels like when you take the water off it because it's doing rather too good a job so we're softening some of those so can you see how now that's got a bit of uh, surface tension yeah julie is saying love the te technical terms flicky flicky sweepy sweepy i should have called the uh, demonstration that shouldn't i <laughs> that'd have got people tuning in wouldn't it i've left some white why have i left some white because it's not important uh to paint it all in um and there what i've got now is i've got my flicky flicky uh background foliage <laughs> you lot do make me chuckle and uh, now i've got my sweepy sweepy water and that's kind of taken care of now now i can concentrate on the heron and i don't have to worry uh about the surroundings of it so it's a very much a less is more type of um consideration isn't it um, I should dry that really, but I'm not going to. Let's uh, crack on with the next bit. So I need to find uh, some heron colours. Let's have a look in the paint box, shall we? And see what we think uh, heron colours are going to be. Now, obviously, I have a pretty good idea already. Uh, not because I'm being smug about it, but just because uh, I know that there are colours in my box that are going to work. So we're going to go for uh, Bees Gold, which is one of my watercolours. <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm chuckling at the comments um this is a, a really unusual yellow this is it here um it does both very thin very uh, bright yellows and kind of much richer golden colors as well so we're going to go for bees gold and uh, we're going to go for uh, oddly two d different darks so we're going to go for black iron oxide which is also one of my range of watercolor paints um, i'm choosing that because it granulates so i'm going to get a nice texture out of it and I'm also going to go for Jane's Grey. That's a Daniel Smith uh, colour because it doesn't granulate quite so much. I'll be able to get some really uh, interesting darks out of it. So let's uh, show you the reference material again. You can see hopefully why I've chosen those colours. We've got uh, the Jane's uh, Grey for those really dark, rich kind of colours. I'm going to use the Black Iron Oxide for the greys. And I'm going to use the bee's gold for that uh, beady old eye and that incredible beak on it. OK, uh, well, there we go. So uh, here we go. I've got something weird going on with its beak over here, but I'm not going to think too hard about that yet. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is to find from the detritus fallout of stuff, because I do have a horrible habit when I'm painting, just chucking it down. Um, so I've got my uh, security blanket in my hand so that I can control the amount of paint and water that I've got going on my brush. I've got my size 4 imitation sable brush here and I've got my bees gold. So I didn't need to spritz this before I work it because I don't want it to be overly wet. I just want to coat my brush with enough colour 
let's take you to close up actually that would be more useful wouldn't it um and i'm going to uh, paint this beak in is it a beak or a bill never quite sure the the difference technically i should know really um so we'll get some of this very strong yellow in we've got to make sure that that yellow goes all the way up to the back what's going on here this needs to pass that's better there we need to get a tiny touch of it in around the eye because we want herons always look a bit annoyed a bit narked um, so uh, they, they've got these in incredible eyesight to be able to see the fish move and then what I'm going to do is you can sort of see it on the, the photograph is I'm going to use some of this bees gold colour, the, the kind of the bit on the edge of the pan, because we've got some uh, related colour elsewhere. But where this heron is white, it's reflecting a bit of the green around it, a bit of the grey around it, but it's got some little yellowy areas too. And uh, this is very useful to stop areas of your painting looking like they, they stand alone. So a bit of relatable colour is always good. So I'm going to take some of that bees gold and kind of smush it into the surroundings. And then it's a nice transition between the green and the heron. And it also means that uh, hopefully uh, I won't have too much of a, a cardboard cutout look to my heron. So that's working well. Um, rather than have, I may change my mind about this, rather than have another colour for the legs, let's sweep a bit of this in uh, just to see if this works. I'm going to have to make those darker. Let's have a look at my photo. Oh yeah, it's a sort of, it's a sort of buffy colour in the um, photo. This will do, be fine. I'm sure I'll get people telling me that herons aren't, uh, their legs aren't that colour, but artistic licence and all that. Uh, that will be okay and then let's start working on some of the greys I'm going to go back to the normal camera for this so that you can kind of see it in context now I want to put some grey in that uh, this is going to sound really daft as well it's going to go with flicky flicky sweepy sweepy I want to put some grey in that just is grey and doesn't really describe anything because I don't want at the moment it does look like an egret I think Christine was saying that she'd been uh, watching an egret recently it's too white at the moment so it needs some grey it needs uh, lots of other things going in but I don't want it to be too dark now I'm going to go for the black iron oxide for this because black iron oxide uh, like I said if you use a lot of water with it it makes the most incredible kind of grey very thin uh, colour granulates too so we'll get some interesting textures out of it. Let's have a look at me heron. Uh, where are we going to go with this? Uh, we're going to have some of it. So again, can you see I'm practicing the stroke? going Making all those noises uh, before my brush actually touches the paper. So looking back at my photo, getting uh, a sense of colour in. I'm trying not to paint it all in. I'm a bit concerned that my green ends abruptly. So what I'm going to do is uh, soften that edge with some water so that I can describe the back edge of my uh, heron. OK, that's better. Uh, let's <coughs> excuse me. Uh, use some water uh, to get this in. I don't want to make it the same tone as the green. Otherwise, I'm going to struggle for my heron to stand out. The reason I keep pausing when I say heron is because I keep wanting to say ostrich. Oh dear. Can you tell I'm not a morning person? Right. Anywho, let's get some shading in on this heron, not an ostrich, Ali. Um, and look at that. We can thin that colour right out. The, this is not the end of my white highlights at all. Um, so so let's get some slightly deeper colour coming down the back so that we describe the end of the heron. I probably should have put some green around the back. Oh, do you know what? Let's do it now. Stop talking about it and actually do it. Let's get some green back in to describe that's better, isn't it? Why didn't I do that before? Because I didn't think about it. 
but at least with a nice can you see what i mean about this kind of loose uh technique that you can add to it it's, it's never the end of it christine's asking if i'd like some coffee yes as you can tell i haven't had my coffee yet uh, so we've got a nice grey going on. Uh, let's um, not an early bird. Wah, wah, wah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, let's get some rich, slightly richer colour going in. And I'm trying to make as few marks as I possibly can because I don't want to overdo it. Uh, do I think I need to dry that? Let's dry that. Uh, go. And then I can get all the meaty bits in, can't I? I can get my strong darks in and I can get my highlights in. Bit of reflection. All of that stuff. Actually, while that's drying, I've just spotted a slight anomaly in that, for some reason, I decided that the yellow of this heron's leg wasn't coming all the way down to the bottom why did i decide that who knows who knows how my brain works on a tuesday morning let's get that coming in there that's better um dum, 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 dum. where else do i want it let's, uh, let's uh, i think i want this to be i probably need to put a shadow in that so let's see if we can do it in a bit of the yellow that's better um <laughs> christine's uh, offering to get the coffee on thank you it's a shame you're so far away christine <laughs> otherwise there'd be a knock on the door and i'd have coffee delivered i know right let's take care of uh, a bit of this uh reflection as well so we'll put a little bit of leg in there and we'll mess about with that to kind of interrupt it so that we get that kind of understanding that there is um this is a reflection let's push that color up a touch there you go christine's delivered the coffee in the chat marvelous um i don't think i need to do any more to that what i'm going to do now do i want that size brush or do i want something in between oh, no, i think i'll stick with this brush we're going for the james gray now so the james gray is uh hopefully um going to be the thing that uh sort of defines uh, starts to make it look um a deeper richer uh, it's a lovely color for adding depth it's almost dry it'll do uh, one thing i am really keen to get on to is this amazing bit of feather that goes on up and over the top so let's get that in i know i've got some feathers to put coming down at the back but i'll take care of those in a minute so that works really well there's something weird going on on the top of this heron's head and i think it's because the green doesn't quite come up to the edge can you see that got that little uh, gap going on let's uh, fill that in because it's starting to annoy me let's get that in and joined up a touch better there we go and we'll blend this that's better what's that what's going on there okay that is that is heron i'll forgive you that maybe we'll do a bit of tidying up of that later that's okay uh right back to the james gray because really um it, it kind of enthusiastic about getting this wing in i can edit some of the detail in it later but we want to get the shoulder in in paint if we can up and over the top kind of coming looking at my photo all the time that's really cool and working well let's get a nice deep shadow in under here to show that wing and we've got some sh feather shapes coming down at the bottom so starting to come together now it won't really come together until i get oh, i'm using the wrong color i thought why isn't it going on as uh, as i would like because i was using black iron oxide there we go there's the james gray i thought why isn't that deep enough Except I've now got a nice wet into wet thing going on. Uh, we have that coming down here. It's got some lovely feather ends going on. 
want to soften that just a touch into the neck actually there's a serendipitous moment for you I quite like the fact that I've got both James Gray and um, black iron oxide going on because I got a bit of granulation and a bit of depth of color too so maybe uh, sometimes these things happen for a reason don't they let's get uh, this is quite a deep shadow in under here looking thinking about the marks I'm making all the time trying to think about the mark before it goes down rather than just blindly stabbing away at the mark <clears throat> that's better I think uh, we can soften some of this so it's not over described and I think what we'll do is we'll use the James Gray uh, in the water to maybe describe a little bit of extra pattern so we are we're getting there now aren't we it's really missing its white highlights and um, that is kind of uh, where I was talking about should I use masking fluid or should I not earlier if I had used masking fluid uh, this would obviously be the point that I would take it off and I'd have really bright crisp highlights to work back in but um, it's looking a little bit fuzzy at the edge but then don't forget I made that conscious decision didn't I uh, because I didn't want it to be too crisp so crisp but not too crisp that's a real painter's dilemma isn't it uh, so uh, I have my gouache here um, but I'm going to give this a dry Okay, is that dry enough? I think that is. I need it to be fairly dry because I want uh, my white highlights to really pop on uh, this. My water is a little bit filthy, it has to be said, so um, I am in danger of not getting the whitest version of my gouache. So this is the way that I uh, like to use gouache. I use it in a tinting saucer, a stacking saucer they're sometimes called as well. And uh, I squeeze it out on the edge and then I make a, a lovely puddle of colour in the centre, depending on how white I want it to be. Now you could use a uh, white gel pen, a white Posca pen. In actual fact, I have a Posca pen just uh, to my right in case I can't get this fine enough because I've only got a size four brush and I'm wondering whether I need to grab something a bit finer. Um, but let's see what happens. Yeah, maybe I do need to grab a finer brush. Luckily, because I am risk averse, I have everything uh, just to my right hand side or on the floor, just in case I need it. Oh uh, dear. I know that you've seen on my social media channel sometimes, haven't you? I do photograph what my desk looks like after a broadcast. So I've got a size two brush in here and uh, yeah that's much better I'm going to get a much finer line out of that let's just set up a little station for my tinting saucer grab the uh, good old uh, safety blanket and have that in a pad <clears throat> and now I can use the the white um, I just need to have a look at my photo there it is to go back in and I can reclaim some of these parts in fact, let's take you to the close-up camera. You'll be able to see nice and easily what it is that I'm doing. Here we go then. So I'm using uh, little flicky marks with my brush to describe some of the edges of my hair and I need to reclaim a nice highlight on here. Need to keep replenishing my brush uh, to make sure that this is nice and bright down here. You see, I thought I was gonna need a Posca pen. <clears throat> but I don't think I'm going to uh, and then here where these amazing feathers are I can go back in with my brush and get some interesting long marks out of it I think it needs to be wetter it's not traveling the paint's not traveling as far as I would like it to there we go there we go 
play around with the consistencies of your gouache really important and let's break up the edge of this so we've got that lovely kind of texture on the chest going into the undercarriage and we've got some shorter marks on there got a really bright white patch in here for the edge of this wing glad I put that yellow in now and I think a few extra white flashes in here now what is happening I don't know oh, I can I can sort that out in a minute with a pen now I've lost uh, the white of the uh, tail in here but I can pop that back in if I was doing this I'm sort of aware that uh, I'm running close to time now so um, maybe I will finish this uh, off camera but there's one last thing I wanted to show you because sometimes uh, we forget don't we that it's perfectly acceptable to go back in with materials that you have already used to redefine things and I think I need my black and my grey so um, there's some feathers coming off the back now it's not necessarily that you're going to see them uh, particularly close up in this portrait but important to me that they're put in it sort of finishes off the back of the the neck this isn't nearly big enough this uh, section of uh, dark that comes around the eye to the point where actually it needs to go right up to the eye rather than fiddling about with my brush um, I can put it back in in pen much easier much much easier let's uh, make that shape uh, understood a bit better still don't like the way that this beak is running so let's finish that off possibly needs a stronger more defining line at the top that's uh, improved that it needs a little bit of texture at the top too um, I think this would be better slightly more redefined so you can see how you can uh, make your way around it it's not quite as finished as I would like it to be but I can uh, frou frou around with it uh, before I uh, post the the finished article back on that blog so stop drawing Ali <laughs> so I think for the time being we will uh, we will call it a day there um, so relatively simple in terms of technique uh, certainly in the background where we've talked about uh, vignettes but uh, I think as well sometimes people say oh I want to draw a bird but I'm really worried about doing the reflection in the water um, and hopefully what this showed you was that you didn't necessarily need to overthink that that I took care of it really quite quickly so that I could concentrate on the heron itself and then sometimes if you do things um, uh, kind of quickly, if you do them, so we did the background and the water all in one go, and then we could concentrate on the heron. I, I think sometimes we section it up into too many details, don't we? We go, right, we'll do the background, then we'll do the bird, then we'll do the water, then we'll do the legs, then we'll do, and it's too much, too many processes. And that's when your paintings can lack cohesion, I think, that we section it up into too many parts um, and then there's, uh, there's no flow. I hate to go all arty on you, but there's no flow between uh, all of those elements that we're trying to incorporate in our painting. So I hope that uh, Trudy's just uh, summed it up beautifully for me. Um, I hope that's given you food for thought. I hope it's given you some ideas of how you might uh, tackle similar subjects. Don't forget that you can go over to that blog, download the photograph, follow this tuition back and do the flicky flicky swishy swishy uh, thing. Uh, before you do disappear, just uh, indulge me a couple minutes more if you don't mind. If you want to find me on social media, I am at... Alibord artist you will find me across all channels including threads now as well you can find the quick links to various uh, socials um, on the website or um, on what's called link tree if you where it says link in bio if you're on instagram if you uh, tap on my bio 
you'll see that link and all the links to to everything that I do. Uh, so do follow me, do give me a like, do share what I do with friends as well. If you could do, I'd be so, so grateful. If you see something that you think might interest one of your artistic friends, that would help me out enormously. Now we are back on October the 3rd. So that is the next Technique Tuesday, first Tuesday in the month of October. And the theme for October is Scotland, uh, which I'm very thrilled about, a place that I've spent a lot of time in. And obviously we have some lovely Scottish friends in our groups as well. So it's uh, nice to give their beautiful scenery a nod. And I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing some mountains for you, but I'm going to be using acrylic as a resist for watercolour. So that's going to be a real technique heavy technique Tuesday. Um, don't forget uh, the uh, website address www.learningtopaint. Make yourself a coffee, grab a biscuit from the biscuit tin, sit down with my website because there's so much in there for you to enjoy and uh, share with others. So thank you for your time this morning. Uh, I really appreciate it. You take lots and lots of care of yourselves, won't you? And don't forget, if you do a heron, share it with everybody, tag me in it at Ali Board Artist because I would very much love to see it. But take care of yourselves and uh, we'll catch up very soon. Bye lovely people. Bye.